Uh, and so that, that opportunity to work with hundreds of principals around the country solidified my belief that that, that principal role is critical mm -hmm. to the work that we do. Mm -hmm. um, and so with, with that said, the, the role that I have now, it, um, it, it's uh, certainly there's lots of topics and, and lots, of, lots of things that we're um, embarking on. But right. in some ways, we, we could talk about two of, the, two of them, two headings, I think. Uh, and one of the headings is all about implementation. And um, this is that idea that our state has done incredible work in the last, uh, last number of years to put a policy framework in place that, that has a vision, that has a vision for all of our children as we talked about a few minutes ago, but also a vision for the types of practices that need to happen in our schools. Right? Things like teachers coming together to work around student needs and doing that in what we call our PLCs, which are, uh, which at the end of the day are teachers working together in an environment where they collaborate um, around data to, to meet the students' needs. But you, you don't just write that down on paper and then have it happen. And so much of the work that I'm engaged in right now is work around implementation. Um, that idea that just because you write it down doesn't mean anything, that, it's, that the execution is what matters and, and quality implementation is what matters. And so uh, we have a saying um, right now that we've been using with my team, which is 80% implementation, meaning that 80% of our focus right now is on supporting our educators, supporting our school principals, supporting our districts to implement all the practices that they have committed to, mm -hmm. um, primarily underneath the race to the top umbrella, but certainly uh, more far reaching than that. So that's the one big umbrella. Um, and the other is, that we are, we are embarking on some work to ask, what are the complementary uh, policies, the complementary practices that can add to that 80% implementation? And we heard our governor a few months ago speak in his State of the State address to a number of those things. For example, really focusing on improving teacher preparation. That, that if we're focusing on implementation of the quality of the teacher in the classroom, how that person is teaching, how they're planning, how they're implementing the common core standards that we may be able to talk about later, mm -hmm. that it's critical that the preparation that that person had before they ever set foot in the classroom was of the highest quality. Right? And that's about us working with our higher education programs. It's about working with the alternative programs that prepare our teachers and making sure that the preparation um, prepares them to be successful day one. Right? So that, that's a complementary component to so much of the implementation work. Right? Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, we could talk about some others, such as providing teachers with the opportunity to have leadership roles. Another piece would be making sure that our school choice system is a system that makes sense to parents, that it's a system that, that functions well and is efficient and, and, uh, and parents are not left to navigate all sorts of different timelines and application procedures and so serving our communities and our parents um, so that they can navigate the choice system. Having navigated it myself a number of times, um, it can be cumbersome uh, and confusing. And so 80% implementation and the other 20% is about those complementary policies, practices, laws that we can implement that would help our system move forward um, and make sure that the foundation is incredibly strong. Mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting that you <coughs> bring up that uh, point about the 80% implementation because I know I retired in uh, uh, 2010. Yes. And um, during that time period, uh, some of those changes that we needed to implement were, were coming down, were being presented. And what I found was the greatest challenge was the fact that when you go to college, you have your methods classes. Oh, and yeah. then when you take a position, you have uh, the scope and sequence scope book. And sequence, yeah. Or you know, at the uh, elementary level, at the uh, we, uh, upper levels, you have your teacher's manual. And then you have the district's procedures or policies. And then you have the state and so you're sitting there as the educator in the classroom with maybe 25 or 30 people and you have these four things that you have to begin to balance and fit into a, a lesson plan or yes. unit plan. Yes. And so it, that was the greatest challenge when, I, when they started this reform movement. It's not that um, teachers did not want to do, it's how to balance and get all these things meshed into a lesson plan so that you can begin to address the different uh, populations of uh, people 
that were in front of you because at the same time they came up with the differentiated instruction. So now you were trying to do all of this from what you had from college, what the school required, what the district required, the scope and secrets from the publishers, and you were the key person in meshing all of that. And so it mainly was the, the, the challenge came in the meshing yeah. to do that. You know, so it's, it's interesting that you bring that point up because that's 80%, which is a key and a large percentage of the, of the whole process. Well, I think at this time we'll take, we'll go to a break and then we come back, we'll talk about uh, the um, testing, the Common, Common Core, Core that you had just yeah. mentioned. Sure. So at this time, we'll take a break and we'll be back with you shortly. <laughs> 